Hey there, pirates. Welcome aboard the Anime No Me channel. Do you know how Shanks became one of the Yonku? The One Piece manga seems to have revealed this to us, and I'm going to share it with you in today's video. I hope for your support to help our crew win, and to do so, you just need to click the thumbs up button, leave a like, and subscribe to the channel. By doing this, you will win an incredible devil fruit, so just comment which fruit you want. Guys, one of the biggest reasons Shanks may have become a Yonku could be linked to a specific event, the defeat of the giant Loki, which would also explain the respect he gained among the inhabitants of Elbaf. It's possible that Shanks' path to becoming a Yonku began when he crossed paths with Loki shortly after the giant prince murdered his own father, the king of Elbaf, to obtain the mysterious Akuma no Mi that the giant kings guarded across generations. Let's try to explore what might have happened. First, I imagine that as soon as Loki took the position of king, Elbaf fell into a dark period. The nation of warriors, known for its honor and battle spirit, came under the rule of an ambitious and ruthless leader. Loki wasn't just physically strong, the devil fruit he inherited might have further increased his power to the point where he proclaimed himself the sun god. We know that this expression carries symbolic weight since the giants value the strength of nature, traditions, and above all, the concept of deities that represent the balance between creation and destruction. To understand the impact of Shanks on Elbaf, it's essential to visualize the scenario that the giant prince, Loki, built for himself after killing his own father. This event is significant because for the giants of Elbaf, the value of lineage and family honor is one of the foundations of their culture. Thus, Loki's act was a drastic break from the customs and beliefs of his people, something that would not have been easily accepted, but was imposed out of fear or respect for his strength. I believe this is the essence of Loki's reign. He became a king through fear, replacing the old concept of a noble warrior with that of a god who imposes his power. After this act, Loki not only took the throne, but also gained control of the Akuma no Mi that passed between the kings of the giants. We still don't know exactly what this fruit does, but it's likely related to domination over light or fire, something worthy of someone who would call himself the Sun God. So, Loki would use this fruit both as a symbol of power and as a weapon, proving to the people of Elbaf that he was invincible. I imagine that this power also reinforced his authority among the giants, who came to see him as an untouchable figure. With the throne and the fruit's power, Loki transformed Elbaf into a nation of continuous war, where he, as the sun god, encouraged the warriors to fight not for honor, but for supremacy. This would have attracted pirates, mercenaries, and other opportunists to Elbaf, where they were received on the condition that they submitted to Loki. Perhaps even other tribes or smaller civilizations were crushed or subjugated by Loki, further increasing his influence. Elbaf thus went from being a land of warriors to an empire of terror and glory, where everyone was a subject of the Sun God. I believe Shanks entered Elbaf at a time when this nation was under a kind of tyranny, with Loki relentlessly dominating the forces and warriors of Elbaf. It's possible that Shanks was drawn there by Elbaf's reputation, and more so by the rumors that the new king was using his power brutally. It's interesting to think that Shanks, being someone who values freedom and has a strong sense of justice, even though he's a pirate, would feel compelled to intervene upon seeing Elbaf's former glory being corrupted. We know that Shanks always had a different approach from the other Yonku. He was never someone who sought domination or was interested in subjugating other islands. That's why I think that instead of heading to Elbaf seeking conquest, Shanks found himself in a situation where he needed to fight someone who was abusing his power. Perhaps he understood that by defeating Loki, he could not only gain the respect of Elbaf, but also restore the peace the nation had before this event. Another important point is that the position of Yonku demands respect and authority. It's possible that Loki's defeat was such an impactful event that it drew the world's attention, causing the world government and even other notorious pirates to recognize Shanks as one of the four emperors. After all, defeating the king of the giants, one of the world's strongest warriors, is an accomplishment that few could achieve. This victory would not only have made Shanks a feared figure, but also an ally of the giants of Elbaf, bringing him a great advantage in terms of power and influence. I believe that he and his red-haired pirates arrived at Elbaf not to dominate, but out of curiosity and perhaps due to the fame the island had gained under Loki's rule. Shanks always had a strong sense of justice, and despite being a pirate, he values freedom and cannot stand tyranny. Upon arriving at Elbaf, he must have quickly sensed the oppressive atmosphere that reigned on the island, with warriors forced to obey Loki's orders and the inhabitants living in constant fear. I think this perception of Shanks was what motivated him to take action. We know he's not someone who gets involved in unnecessary conflicts, but when faced with an injustice, he feels the need to act. I imagine that Shanks tried to reason with Loki, appealing to the warrior side of the giant, 
hoping he would see the value of freedom over tyranny. But being Loki, a figure so full of pride and vanity, this dialogue might have only irritated the giant, who saw Shanks as a threat to his absolute power. This tension between Shanks and Loki might have quickly escalated into a challenge. Loki, in his role as Sun God, would not allow anyone to question his authority. Thus, he would have accepted Shanks' challenge, likely underestimating the power of the redhead. Loki believed his position as king, and his Akuma no Mi made him invincible, and that's probably what led to his downfall. But how did Shanks defeat Loki? I think it's possible that he used a combination of advanced hockey abilities, especially the Conqueror's hockey, to face Loki on equal terms. We know that giants have enormous pride, and that battles are extremely significant to them. So I imagine Shanks challenged Loki in a direct combat, something that would demonstrate not only his strength, but also his courage. In a theory that makes sense, Shanks may have taken advantage of an emotional weakness of Loki, his pride. By proclaiming himself Sun God, Loki displayed arrogance that Shanks Shanks could have exploited. It's possible that Shanks provoked Loki, questioning his ability as a king and his betrayal of his own father. This might have caused Loki to lower his guard, giving Shanks the opening needed to defeat him, either through a mental or physical battle. When Shanks finally defeated Loki, I believe he didn't kill him. Instead, he probably handed him over to the giants of Elbaf, who, respecting their nation's traditions and spirit, chose to imprison him. And this is where Shanks' symbolic power grows even more. By leaving Loki to be judged by his own people, Shanks demonstrates that although powerful, he is not cruel. This would have ensured the eternal support and respect of the warriors of Elbaf. Another interesting point is that Shanks did not take control of Elbaf after defeating Loki. This shows that his goal was never to dominate. I think this was one of the key elements that truly made him seen as a true emperor, someone who commands respect and establishes natural alliances without forcing anyone to follow him. As a result, Shanks would not only have secured a power base in Elbaf, but also gained a strategic advantage in the new world. This alliance with the giants likely made it difficult for other Yonku or the world government to approach Elbaf. Just imagine, a place so strategic and full of formidable warriors, where loyalty and fighting strength are part of the culture. The victory over Loki would have been the turning point, cementing Shanks' name as one of the most respected men in the world worthy of being called a Yonku. Shanks' rise to Yonku after defeating Loki would have resonated across the world. The world government, always alert to the balance of power, would have seen Shanks as a greater threat than the other Yonku. After all, he wasn't just strong, he also had strategic allies and an ideology of freedom and justice, which made him a difficult figure to control. To the government, Shanks represented a force that couldn't be intimidated or bought, someone who challenged the oppressive system they maintained. Moreover, other Yonku, like Kaido, and Big Mom, who have histories of attacking islands and controlling territories through force, would likely view Shanks as a dangerous rival. His presence in Elbaf not only strengthened his influence, but also made it harder for anyone to invade or dominate that region. The presence of giants as allies meant that Shanks had an army of formidable warriors by his side, capable of facing even the strongest pirates. I think that upon hearing about Shanks and his connection to Elbaf, Luffy will feel even more motivated to explore this mythical land and learn more about the legacy of his idol. For Luffy, knowing that Shanks defeated a sun god to protect the freedom of a people is something that resonates deeply with his own ideals. When Luffy finally reaches the real Elbaf, he won't just be exploring new territory, he'll be following in Shanks' footsteps and proving himself worthy in the eyes of the giants. And with all we've seen, the story of Shanks and Elbaf and his victory over Loki Loki is not just about power, but about leadership, freedom, and honor. He became a Yonku because he earned the respect of the giants and restored peace to the land of war. His influence doesn't come from fear, but from the loyalty he inspired by protecting the values and culture of the giants. This victory marked Shanks not just as one of the most powerful men, but as a true emperor, someone who maintains his position with dignity and justice, something that Luffy mirrors and which will eventually be crucial for the final confrontation against the world government and the forces that oppress the world. What do you think about this? Do you agree? Comment. That was today's content. We hope you liked it and want to share your opinion on the subject. Don't forget to share the video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and stay amazing.